Thank you for listening to the Pull It Back podcast. Now here are your hosts, Mike and Andy. Hello, welcome to the Pull Back podcast. It's me, Andy. Just me this time. Gonna kind of do a little thing like Mike did. I thought it was pretty funny. The little rant he went on, he sounded like Bill Burr. Just all pissy. So, I wanted to give a quick shout out to my wife. It's hilarious the amount of dumb shit that she will tolerate from me. Like, uh, every once in a while. No, let me be honest. Every single day, before she gets ready for work, or while she's getting ready for work, I I have to go in and fuck with her. I have to go in and, like, try to touch her boobs, or, you know, her ass, or something. And, like... Excuse me. She'll be in the shower and have to touch her butt. She tries to splash me with water and shit. So I'll pull the curtains up and be like, no. Your powers are no good here. I have my barrier powers up now. And she'll be like, God, you're an idiot. <clears throat> and then I'll just sit there and try to like bite her through the plastic. I don't know why I'm like this. But it it's compulsory. I have to do it. So... She gets me back, and I have to keep my mouth shut. Like, I really have no business getting pissed off at her for dumb shit that she does back to me. Sorry if I'm dad breathing. I got, like, a sinus issue. Had it since Thanksgiving, and it's, like, kind of hard to breathe. Probably shouldn't be talking, but fuck it. Um, So, like, she'll leave the lids off shit. Off of every, like, I'll go to grab a thing of vitamins in the morning, and I'll, like, grab it. By the top, like normally you do. I guess some people grab it from the middle. But I just grab it from the top. And, you know, unscrew the top to get a vitamin. But I'll go in to grab it, pick it up like a couple inches off the ground, off the counter or whatever. And it'll, the top falls off. And pills fucking go everywhere. So I'm like, God damn it. How fucking hard is it to close a fucking lid? And she leaves the toothpaste cap off. And, tooth, and she'll just leave toothpaste fucking squeezed out all over the top of it. So I'm like, God damn it. So I'll take her toothbrush and scrub all the excess dried fucking cemented on toothpaste off of the lid so it'll actually fucking close. I don't know. See, I'm getting mad. I'm getting upset. Because she does such annoying shit. I, so that is the price I pay for going and fucking with her all the time. Is she has to leave the lids off shit. That's my penance, I guess. I hope that's the right context. So shout out to the old lady for putting up with all my fucking bullshit all the time. But then, you know, then she'll come in, like, I'll be trying to get naked and she'll, like, turn the lights off in the bathroom. Or when I'm in the shower, she'll turn the fucking lights out. Or when I'm trying to get naked, she'll try to grab up my penis and shit. She'll grab up my dick. And I'm like, stop, stop. She's like, what? And I'm like, oh, yeah. And then, like, I'll be laying in bed. And she'll try to fucking jam her fingers up my ass. I was turned over earlier watching a video on YouTube. And she came in and did that fucking Japanese kids game where they shove their fingers up your ass. It's a, it's an insane game and they'll just like boop and stab you in the butthole. She did that shit and I was like, God damn it. But again, you know, that's how we pay each other back for our, each other's bullshit, I guess. So I had a thought about Walmart. I was in there the other day and yeah, you see the most incredible shit when you're in Walmart it's it's like the epicenter for the damaged people in our society it's like rich people are selling themselves short not entering a Walmart I'm sure there's rich people that shop at Walmart at the time but they probably are like Jesus Christ stepping over like baby diapers in the parking lot and I'm like Diane let's go in get what we need and leave 
and they get in their, I don't know, Mercedes SUV and drive away. That, that's my idea of a rich person going to Walmart. But they they really if they should really go more often, because the more often you go and the more that you look around, one Walmart is great. Walmart has great prices. They're a monster corporation, that's for sure. They treat their people like shit, but that's for another time. And they have some of the most curious individuals you will ever see. You know, you get drug addicts, especially late at night or really early in the morning. Really early in the morning, you get them right off the bus, and uh, you see see them just stepping off, and you know that's going to be cool. It's going to be a crazy, unpredictable day. I have this Walmart that I go to regularly, and I love to go in there and see some of the people that go into like the restaurants and stuff. And I was in there one day, and this this gentleman, of course, he was on a hover round, was screaming at the workers, like, because he didn't get his icy, he didn't get the right flavor icy, and he's, like, threatening to kill his own mom, and then he's just throwing a motherfucker around like it's nothing, (laughs) and so they call security over, of course, and they're like, dude, you can't say that you're going to be killing people in the Walmart. And let's he's not going to kill anybody but himself if he continues on his course because he's he was huge. He was massive. And he's not going to die from a gunshot. He's he's going to have a heart problem. But I was like, "Good god, like to go out in public like that, the amount of confidence and fucking just willpower you have to go out into public." like that and treat somebody that you don't even know with that level of disrespect screaming at them threatening their lives you know saying that you're threatening your mother's life your own mother's life it's so weird it was a very very odd display but hilarious it was absolutely ridiculous some of the most funny, mentally ill people shop around Walmart. Um, and the the people who are normal, quote-unquote, there are some of the most physically unfit people. I'm not fit by any means. I'm fat. But this poor bastard that I came upon the other day when I was in, in the same Walmart that the guy threw a fit at, I walked into the restroom, and this poor bastard was struggling to do... I would... Hopefully he was trying to piss, because if he was take, trying to take a shit, I don't know what kind of shits this guy could even take. It is beyond possible what this guy could shit. He was... Needless to say, he was a hefty gentleman, and uh, he was just in there making sounds like you would make if you had a sucking chest wound, like I just kind of like gurgling and uh, like, uh, oh my god, like those kinds of sounds. Like, he just found out that his tax return wasn't going to be as big as he thought it was going to be. And he's like, oh, oh my God. My pants. (laughs) That (laughs) I was standing at the urinal pissing, and I hear him go, my pants. So I can only assume he's probably, I can only assume he did something in his pants. And it probably wasn't you know, that he spilt barbecue sauce from a McRib on them or anything. He probably shit his pants. So, (laughs) so I really hope he got, went back out, right back out there to the men's section and got himself a pair of reasonably priced Levi jeans because they got the V-shaped crotch and they're very comfortable. You can get really limber in them. I really enjoy them. 
So, you know, you say what you will about Walmart, but they've got some damn good pants for men. And Levi's are they're comfortable and they look good. That's your commercial right there. But um <laughs> this poor bastard. And one one times when I went one of the times that I went in there out of a at a Walmart that was out of town and this couple like I kind of needed to move fast. I was looking for something and I couldn't quite find it. And I was trying to go up and down the aisles again really quick to make sure I didn't miss it. And I got behind this couple excuse me, in the aisle and they were both in hover round scooter thingies. And you know, there it was an older and gentleman and, and his wife. And they, of course, they wanted to be side by side in their hover rounds while they, you know, debated, you know, sales prices on, you know, potatoes au gratin and hamburger helper. Now, hamburger helper is fucking delicious. I'm not, I'm not bashing hamburger helper. If you've never had hamburger helper, you're a fucking communist. Anyway, they were picking out this shit and looking at canned goods and, and whatnot. And I was like, Jesus Christ, can you, can you pass? Can you just pass for a second? So I can get around you and walk at a human's pace because I've got shit to do. And usually when I'm in a store, I want to get the get in, get the fuck out. So I walk really fast wherever I go. <laughs> I feel like sometimes I'm rude because I, I usually don't stop. Like if somebody's in the way, I'm like, I'm, I'm getting by. Like I'm like, oop, oop, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. You know, I say excuse me. Like, I don't think I'm I'm that rude, but I just I just need to get around you. Like I'm not knocking people over. I'm just kind of like I'll like walk up on somebody really quick, and maybe we're not paying attention. But like oh oh, you know you do that that stutter step where you're like where are you going? You know you're trying to spin move out of it. So that happens to me quite often. So it's 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 always such an awkward experience. Like mm, you're doing that weird. <laughs> tight-lipped smile, like you don't know this person, you're like, excuse me, sorry, pardon, and it, it it was with hover rounds this time, so I was like, my god, so I just had, I had to go all the way around, in the time it took them to get down the middle of the aisle, I went down, the back down the other aisle, came back up, and on the other, got around the other side of them, it's like, Jesus, Mary and Joseph, like, some people are just rude as shit. I get maybe they were just oblivious to people around them, and it's it's hilarious because you know in this time the United States has a huge obesity epidemic, and you get to see plenty of examples of this at Walmart. And it's like that's that's the truth. That's the sign of poverty is these malnourished people because obese people are fucking malnourished in our country. That's what it means you're, when you're when you're obese in this country. It means you're malnourished. Like in Africa, when you're malnourished, it means you haven't gotten any fucking food. So you're having to eat like dirt and like the fish you find in a shit pond from cows or something. And their you know their kids' tummies are all distended and shit, and flies are getting into the corners of their eye, and they never bat it away. And then they ask you to offer 25 cents a day. But they never do. Maybe they do. I don't know. But in our country, obesity means that you're broke and can't afford food. So you're eating like hot dogs and ramen. And don't get me wrong. I love hot dogs and ramen. And that's why I'm a fat fucking piece of shit. So I wanted to talk about this other thing that I saw that was pretty disturbing, to say the least. I get some good reading in on the toilet, and I came across this this one article um, talking about how this company, this uh, PG&E, it's called, um, that controlled this area out in California that, you know, their power lines and shit, they were in gas lines and they designed them and they serviced them. And apparently they were 
found to be the cause of the 2018 campfire that, you know, killed 80 people and almost wiped a town off the face of the planet. And <laughs> they have the audacity. They didn't inspect or replace transmission lines before they sparked this fire. So this is the whole reason the fire started. They failed to maintain their shit. And they say, we, we're deeply sorry about the role we've our equipment had in this tragedy. We apologize to all those impacted by the devastating campfire. Thank you. They also filed for bankruptcy in January of this year uh, to protect $30 billion from wildfires. Protect them from $30 billion from wildfires linked to its gear. Or uh, basically civil liabilities. Meaning they were going to have to pay this much money. So they were like, okay, we're going to try to get out of this get out of this we can't pay these families we can't pay these families this much money and fix this and and back back in 2010 they were fined 1.6 billion for a gas a gas pipeline explosion so these people have a history of just fuckery It's unbelievable. It's they're they're trying to say they weren't negligent. Sorry for that long pause, because I'm just trying to wrap my mind around the kind of people that are at the top of this thing and are saying to themselves, "Oh, boy, we got to find a way to not pay off what we owe for our shit fucking up." Like I don't, I don't know. I, what other fucking context does that work? I don't know how you can say we caused massive damage, so we're gonna go to court and try to say we're not as bad as you think. And and the judge was like, "No, fuck you. You're you're strictly liable," is what he said. You you are strictly liable. Because you caused this shit. People are pissed. Fires in California are no fucking joke. That's why it probably sucks to live in California. Got a bunch of crazy shit going on in San Francisco. You know, people shitting in the streets in mass. And then you got fires to worry about. So you got, you know, hobos and shit in the streets and fucking needles and crazy ass homeless people. And then you got to worry about fucking burning in an inferno. That's insane. That's fucking insane. Um, the the level of shit companies do, and it's like the Boeing, uh, like the Boeing company. You know, they're they they had all those crashes and shit like that, and now everybody's going to Airbus. So Boeing's like, oh, what the fuck, you know. Uh, we were almost done. It, but people are like, no, fuck you. You're a piece of shit. Fuck you. We're not going to do it. I don't know how some of the CEOs that run these companies can continue in the fashion that they're going in running their companies, cutting corners so badly that it causes a major natural a major disaster basically this is a i mean this is fucking like a hurricane a small hurricane the damage it caused well the the amount of forest that it burned and shit like that and wildlife that it destroyed and houses and not to mention people killed like it i mean that's that's almost on par with how many people die in hurricanes i wonder what that is i want to look that up real quick to see how many people die in hurricanes in the U.S. Hmm. 
Mrs. Bag. So they, the the campfire they were getting charged thir- like thirty million bill thirty billion dollars in in disaster uh, damages right basically they were liable for these things. So one of these category category five storms in two thousand eighteen caused something like one hundred and sixty eight bill one hundred twenty five billion. So, like, de- it's like deaths are less in hurricanes. You know, maybe 20. 2000 se- 2019 season yielded not 18 storms. Major category three or higher. I guess that's what it means to to uh, name a storm is it's got to be a, a category three or higher. Or a major one, I'm sorry. Fucking Jesus, man! Hurricanes are devastating as shit. Why would you live on the Gulf Coast? Why the fuck would you do it? The kid eh. losses in the United States from Dorian totaled between five hundred million and one point six billion. So Dorian was a category one and it was oh I'm sorry hold on what the fuck am I talking about it was a category five I guess Dorian was the, was the big one this year that caused a lot of damage Hurricane Lorenzo geez it was category five 49 foot waves and a rogue waves nearing 100 feet. Holy shit. Hurricanes are fucking insane. The amount of damage they cause. But like, just to kind of put it in perspective. That's that's what you're, you're dealing with. 100 plus mile an hour winds. Giant fucking waves. Um, if we, it's, it's, the dead amount of devastation these things cause but it's like comparable to this fire so I'm getting back to that Jesus Christ went on a tangent there on an average I'm still looking for these deaths I don't know let's see It's giving me a bunch of information. So I'm going down this like weird rabbit hole right now. I know that's kind of one of the things Mike was talking about. He's going going down rabbit holes. It's so easy to go down these fucking things on the internet. And you you just get sucked in. Holy shit. Oh my god. In recent years, the deadliest hurricane was Hurricane Mitch in 1998. Fucking Mitch. With at least 11,000 deaths attributed to it. To it. Oh, there was a death. There was a hurricane in 1893, apparently. In Georgia and South Carolina, that caused one um, one thousand to two thousand deaths. Holy shit! And but it only cost a million dollars only. So I'm guessing there's not an actual like statistic. The deadliest Atlantic hurricane in recorded history was the Great Hurricane of eighteen seventeen eighty. Resulting in 22,000 to 27,000 deaths. Whew. In mo- in the recent years. Mitch, again, 98, was attributed to 11,000 deaths. So, the amount of damage and fires could be pretty similar to a, a 
pretty big hurricane. Thousands of people die. It's looking like thousands of people die and shit like that. Um, I don't know. I don't know what to think about, you know, these things. Obviously, climate change is a hot ticket item these days. Everybody talks about it. So there's like, there's quite a bit of science that backs it up. But it's like, yeah, I mean, I get it. You know, that Greta chick goes on there and she's like, eh, how dare you? And I'm like, shut up, you stupid ass. I get it. You're upset. You're, you're fucking, I don't know how he's, what she's 15 or six. You know, you've, you've not even been alive that long. So shut up. What do you mean? How fucking dare you shut up? It's harder for a lot of people. So you, you have a pretty good in fucking Sweden or where the fuck she's from. You know, if you wanted to change the world, figure out how to feed everybody. How dare they for that? You know, but how how about how dare them, you know, in Africa for cutting kids' hands off and shit? How dare them for that? Like, you're, you're really pissed off about something that was caused by dramatic change in how people live their lives. It's a bad thing. It's it's fucking it. climate change is terrible. Don't get me wrong. I was just talking about f- how crazy hurricanes are. Climate change is is terrible. But it's like, what are you gonna fucking do about it? Clearly, the damage is done. What what are you gonna do? Because uh, everybody's like on on these electric car tri- trips. What kind of waste are you making with making an electric car? Because I don't know if it's changed, but before, I was told by a college professor that it takes, it costs more, I'm sorry, it creates more pollution than is saved when making a Toyota Prius. This is back when the Prius was first made, so I don't know. Like when the Prius first came out, it was like early 2000s that it came out as it was one of the first hybrid vehicles and they were saying it's going to get 80 miles to the gallon and everybody shit on the Prius the Prius was I mean it it was innovative for its day and people were buying them in droves I mean South Park shit on it too for people sniffing their own farts because they bought a Prius and it it created more pollution than it saved. And it came out in 1997. So I wonder if that's true. I wonder if making a Prius does cause more pollution. That's one of the... Toyota admits that the production of its lightweight Prius requires more energy and emits more carbon dioxide than the production of the, its gas-only models. This is how stuff works on science. So that's, I would say that's a pretty reliable source. So the amount of pollution that it creates is more than its gas counterparts. So... If it's creating more pollution, actually, than it's saving, that's what it sounds like to me. <laughs> it's just showing this. It is now only show. It is only now showing that nickel batteries that hybrids are use are not environmentally friendly. Well, now they're using more lithium ion batteries, so that's probably changed. But. The thing about a lithium ion battery is if they blow up, they continue to burn for ever. So you you can't really put them out. You I mean you have to bury them and then even then they'll still burn for fucking days. 
<laughs> so if something can do that, wow. So according to Forbes, the use of lithium batteries has exposed one of the dirtier sides of transitioning to a low-carbon economy. To create these batteries, there's more need for a range of rare earth metals that require heavy mining manufacturing that emits... Yeah, so, I mean, that goes to show you. I mean, I'm not saying that they they can't really reduce your personal carbon footprint because maybe that's the case. But them having to actually mine the shit and manufacture the fucking thing... It's causing more grief than it's really worth, it seems. So when people go out there and say, you got to do something to change the climate and blah, blah, what the fuck can you do? What, I mean, what really can you do to make change? Because I, I, I have yet to, I've yet to hear any scientists that are saying climate change, you just got to change the politicians, the politicians, blah, blah, blah. But no scientist has given, like, a legitimate plan on how to bring about climate change change. <laughs> climate change reform, I guess. I don't know. To to better the, the climate. It, there's yet to be a, a tangible plan set in place by anybody. So Greta, what's her guts, can yell and scream at politicians all she wants for ruining her life but she's not giving us any advice either and they want to give her a Nobel Prize I don't I just don't get it Greta Thunberg that's that's her name She's 16 years old, so she really hasn't, she really has no idea about life yet. So I, I'm I'm exactly 16 years older than her, so I'm twice her age. And I'm here to tell you, you know, when you're that age, you, you have no fucking clue what you're talking about. Maybe she's super, super smart and is informed and is really sad about the environment. And yet there's there's right to be. People do shitty... China and the U.S. You know, I mean, I like how everybody directs this problem to the, the, I guess, the first world economies. Saying, you know, this is your responsibility to take care of. Which I understand, you know. But the U.S. is pretty low on the pollution standard. And, you know, of course, we do some shitty things. You know, dumping shit out into the ocean. It's, it's fucking terrible. And it, it does have to change. I, I agree with that. But it's like, what about fucking China and Russia? You know, they have no fucking standards for pollution in their country. So it's like, why not yell and scream at them? Are you, are you scared? Because I'm not going to say a fucking thing. I, there's nothing I can do that's going to change China's ways. So until they figure out how to control China and how they operate, we're probably not going to see any real climate change improvement in our time, at least. And not I'll, I'll be long dead, my kids will be dead, and probably even their kids will be dead before we start feeling the really, real effects of climate change. Maybe maybe in two generations. So it's going to be really hard to justify doing a bunch of crazy shit that costs taxpayers so much money to in pl- put in place. I don't know. I couldn't think of the word for it. And like people like that, Alexia Casio or AOC, they want to like <laughs> shut down all factories and planes and shit like that. Maybe she didn't say that, but I think she she wanted to do some crazy fucking shit. And I can't remember exactly what she said, but she was like, 
proposing some radical ideas for climate change. Like, well, I mean, no one's ever going to do that. You're not going to make some crazy fucking laws like that because people have a lot of money in what we're doing. So they're never going to let you do that. So any any kind of climate law, climate change law that they're going to put in place is going to be probably doing nothing because the the people who own these companies that are doing the most manufacturing they're be like here's here's a billion dollars please shut up we're going to continue dumping shit into Lake Michigan or what have you so i think that about does it yeah you know, i'm going to get off here and uh let you guys go on about your lives thank you for listening if you're listening and tune in next time thank you have a good night <laughs>